Ozempic will not solve your fat loss issues. It is not the cure for your bad health. Hate to break this to you, but today there is no medical intervention that's gonna solve all these problems. Now that isn't to say that it won't potentially help, but it's not gonna solve the root issue. So don't place your bets on it, okay? You still gotta work on your relationship with food and with exercise, and you still have to develop behaviors that will last you the rest of your life. Um, I wanna say that because it is literally exploding everywhere. We were Super the, popular. We were at the airport yesterday, and I, I must have saw three commercials a for, Oze, for Ozempic. Yeah, I pointed one out to Adam when we were sitting there um, for its fat loss and health, you know, purported uh, properties and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, go ahead. We, we've had um, supplements and pills that suppress appetite. What is so game changing about this one? Is it because the muscle sparing properties that, that come with it it's that, not, that it's, are unique? I mean, it's not a stimulant. So the, the in the past, things that, that killed appetite uh, or brought appetite down um, had a lot of adverse effects. Stimulants tend to raise heart rate, cause people to feel uncomfortable. Um, you build up a tolerance type of deal. Like any, you know, common stimulant, Adderall, you know, mm -hmm. ADHD medicine um, can lower appetite, you know, that kind of stuff. But, but and Ozempic has been shown so far to be the, one of the most successful weight loss um, interventions, medical interventions that's around, really is. But again, it's not, it's not like the cure. It's not going to change your relationship to food. Like, I'll give you an example. We actually, uh, we were just up in Phoenix talking to a bunch of NCI coaches and trainers, and somebody brought up a question about a client who had gastric bypass. Gastric bypass is a very dramatic medical intervention for weight loss. They literally take your stomach, bypass it, leave a tiny pouch um, about the size of my thumb, and you're forced to lose weight. Now, if you look at the data on people who, who uh, go through that process, they do lose a lot of weight because you can't eat anymore, like you used to at least. But uh, lots of other problems tend to pop up because the root issues aren't really solved. Like, why is this person using food like a drug to the point where they're, you know, 100 plus pounds overweight? If we don't solve that, we just remove your ability to have the, the food the way you do, it's going to pop up in other ways, whether it be depression, drugs, alcohol, um, and so on. Yeah. So um, the generic name for Ozempic is semaglutide. This is a peptide, by the way. I mean, we work with a company that provides peptides. And it, it, yes, it will help with weight loss. But if you don't combine it with the stuff that's always, yeah. you know, the things that we've Sound always talked behavior about. behavior and practices, you repeat. You're, you're, it's just not going to, it's not going to do it for well, you. You have to learn how to eat a healthy diet in a way that's sustainable for yourself. You have to develop a relationship with exercise where it's something that you do on a regular basis. Obviously challenging, uh, it takes a lot of work, but if you don't do those things, um, semaglutide or the brand name Ozempic is, it's just not gonna solve your yeah. issues for you. It's just, it's a band-aid. Yeah, what those is. effects uh, inevitably go away. It's once you stop using it too. So like what you're gonna lean so heavy on uh, chemically enhancing yourself to be able to provide you with this um, sort of tapering off of, of this hunger that you have uh, versus really kind of working through that process and, and figuring out like how to, you know, work with maybe including more protein and things that are more satiating in your diet and, you know, figuring that out in terms of something that's like going to last a long period of time, not to mention how expensive it is in like this intervention that we're constantly, uh, you know, implementing into your, into your daily habits. Yeah. I so. think the best way to use something like some agglutide, which again, uh, it, 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 it is efficacious. This is not one of those things that does nothing. It definitely does something, but I think the best way to use it is if, if this is a big challenge for you, you first off, um, make sure you work with a good coach or a trainer because that's the person that's going to guide you to develop these long-term habits. But you would include some agglutide to take the edge off, to give you just enough yeah. so that you can deal with certain things like why you eat the way you do, why you but reach intervention should be temporary. Yeah, and then and then once you do that, it's like a step ladder. Like, okay, now I think I got a bit of a grasp of this. Let me remove the semaglutide. Appetite goes up a little bit. Now let me practice the things that I've been working on. So I could see it uh, being an effective way, almost like training wheels. I could see it being very, yeah. very effective um, in right. that sense. But if you don't work on that, those root issues, um, and, and look, it's a, it's a moneymaker because, again, compared to anything we've done in the past, 
um, any type of medicine or drug or peptide in the past for fat loss, it definitely crushes them all. I mean, it's it w you will lose weight when you go on it, um, but it's not going to solve all your issues. And I, you know, I have to just be honest about that. I want to I'm going to run it. I think you're going to try it. I do. I think I, I would. I think that's great. Yeah. That, just so you could get really some honest feedback. Yes. Yeah. That's why. Not because I think I need it by any means. I think that uh, I really want to see what a what a big difference. Uh, what it a great would, what a great idea. Yeah. And I, I, I'm now's the time for me to do it. Right. I'm dialed in right now. Right. So I'm uh, I'm consistent with my nutrition. I'm consistent with my training right now. And so if I'm going to test something out like that to see like oh wow this is making a big difference for me. Um, I'm curious. I, what I'm really curious about too, is that, um, I, one of my challenge when I'm, when I'm dieting and lean, like trying to lean, like right now I'm more like maintenance surplus cause I'm trying to build, uh, and, and, but I'm in a p position now where I could probably start to cut and lean if I wanted to, to get shredded a little bit. And when I do that, one of the challenges always was making sure I still get adequate protein while I'm also in a caloric deficit. So mm if this thing really suppresses my appetite, I wonder what that's going to be like. And like how it, hard will it be for you to eat right. the right amount of protein? Right. Is that already? You're right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why that study came out that showed muscle loss for mm -hmm. people because um, if you just eat less, but you're not watching what you're eating when you eat less, you're not getting enough protein, enough strength training, your body's going to start to adapt by uh, pairing muscle down, slowing metabolism down to meet the new caloric intake. I, I can't stress enough to the audience too how common that is. Yep. I remember that more times than than not when yeah. I had a client who's let's say, you know, we we had the we had built this relationship with the um, the the dunk tank, the hydrostatic way, right? Like one of the more accurate ways to do body fat test. And so they would come to our gym on a very regular basis, and and our our all of our clients would would dunk and get measured on there. And many times we'd have clients that had, you know, thought they had incredible results. They lost 15, 20, 30 pounds and they would, they would be discouraged because in fact, that was part of why I kind of had stopped having it come around so much because it would really discourage clients. They would measure and then go like, oh my God, like my body fat did, percentage didn't change or potentially went up. Because mm -hmm. you lost muscle. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. they thought they were doing so good because they were, they were training hard and they were consistent with their workouts and they were eating a lot less than what they were before because that's like the messaging, right? And what most clients do is, you know, if eating less is good, then even eating even more or eating even less is even better, right? Yeah. Like more is better type of mentality. And so they would like restrict calories and that became the, the main focus. Stick to my training, show up to my workouts, eat less. Stick to my training, show up to my workouts, eat less. And that was like, and if I did that, scale would go down. And inevitably the scale does go down but what ends up happening is the, the client ends up paring down a ton of muscle. Now, if you're a 150 pounds overweight, then who cares, right? If you're, you're, you're carrying 150 pounds of, of extra body fat on you and you lose 40 pounds and half of it was muscle and half of it was fat, then so be it because we need to get a bunch of weight off of you. But not everybody has to lose 150 pounds. Most people have, we're trying to lose 20 to 35 pounds the, or so. The thing is, and this is this this will simplify, although it's um the, the human metabolism or mammalian metabolism is real complex. This is generally true, okay? If you eat more, the default for your body is to figure out a way to store the excess energy to save for later. So that's the default. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you can't send signals and do things to prevent that from happening so that maybe instead of it getting stored, it gets turned into muscle. But the default is that if you just eat more and you don't do anything in an organized, planned way to try to build muscle, what your body does with that more is it's, it's it tries to store it for, you know, potentially later when you might not have more. Okay, that's the default. The default when you eat less is, uh-oh, we're not getting enough calories to meet our demands. Let's lower our demands. Let's reduce the amount of calories we burn. So the default is to get rid of high demand tissue and, uh, and the ones that that are that you can pare down easiest without having major consequences. Like your brain's not, your body's not going to pare down its brain. You need your brain. It's not going to get rid of your liver. You need your liver. But muscle, if your body doesn't feel like it needs it, um, it'll it'll reduce it. And now your demands will meet the intake. So it's really not any different than like um, the way people will manage their finances. We got excess finances coming in. 
uh, let's save it or let's spend more of it, right? That would be building more muscle. Let's spend more of it or let's save it, which is, you know, that, that's kind of the default. If we make less money, then the default should be to spend less. So that's what ends up happening. So just eating less, if you don't do it the right way, which is, that's the beauty of working with a good trainer or coach. The beauty is we know how to pull the right levers to make the default not happen. Oh, you're eating more? Here's the levers we pull so that it doesn't get stored. It's muscle. Oh, you're eating less? Here's the levers we pull so that you lose body fat, but don't lose the muscle. That's the, that's, you know, in a nutshell, what a good coach or trainer can do on top of the fact that we try to, you know, teach you and coach you on how to pull those levers yourself and do it in a sustainable way, in a way that you want to do it, that's balanced, that feels good and all that stuff. But if you just eat less, if you just take a peptide that makes you eat less and you don't do anything else, you're going to lose muscle. Yeah. That's just, that's just the bottom line. Your body's going to lose muscle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do it right and you lift weights in a way to get stronger. I don't mean just lift weights because people get confused. You can lift weights in a way that, that is not going to work. There's, yeah. Like the programming makes it, this is why we write programs. It makes a big difference. Rest so, periods matter. Rest periods and exercise selection and how you apply and take, like all that stuff, which we talked about you know a million times on the show. If you lift weights, do it the right way or do strength training the right way. And the kind of food that you eat when you eat less, you combine those two and there's more that goes into that, but you combine those two now you don't lose muscle, you just lo lose body fat. And then again, on the flip side, you eat more. If we do those things in the right way, we build muscle instead of building body fat. This is, uh, I mean, really, if, if just oversimplification, this is the big challenge that people have with, with weight loss and weight gain. Um, and obsessing over weight loss is not telling you the full story, which is why, Adam, I've had the same experience with with body fat tests with clients. I mean, I've, I had this experience with myself being yeah, someone who's yeah. experienced and trainers. Which it's, by the way, that highlights the challenge. Of yes. This. It's not just that easy. Like no. where, and I remember seeing all my coaches and trainers that work for me. Many of them had the, and yeah. including myself had that same experience. The first time that we all did like a competition with each other of who could reduce the most body fat and that's exactly what happened is every everybody including these educated experienced trainers cut too hard too fast mm -hmm. and we all lost weight but then when we did the dunk many of us actually stayed the same yeah. body fat percentage. what are you left with yeah yeah it, yeah it was very surprising i it, remember that and you see it in the competitive world super, oh, super common you yeah. have these all these the you know and wh who we all praise and put up on these uh pedestals is like the, the best or the best bodies yeah. or they know the most. And it's like, no, it's a, it's, it's super common. So it's a, you know, it's very, uh, which is also why, um, when we get a client that wants to lose a bunch of weight, we don't focus on necessarily cutting calories. Now, yes, we inevitably do cut calories to lose weight that it, that's in, inevitable what ha ends up happening. But the focus early on is not that. It's the trying to increase the demand of the body. That's right. Speed to build that metabolism. expensive yep. tissue you're talking about. We want to put them in yep. a more advantageous place to lo lose and cut calories from a healthy place that is sustainable long term. And most people that you get hire you have already tried to do it themselves. And they've already slowed that metabolism down by eating less and then binging, then eating less and then binging and not building a lot of muscle, doing a lot of cardiovascular activity and circuit type training. And then they hire you and it's like, oh, I'm eating 2000 calories. I'm 60 pounds overweight. What do I do? It's like, oh, Ozempic isn't the answer to that person. The answer to that person is to to build muscle. Now, does it mean that that potentially can't be a tool, right? Exactly. Like I would, I would love to take that. And that's why I want to experiment with myself because maybe it does make a big difference on the way back down, right? So if I could build, mm -hmm. if I I'd still take that client who's eating two thousand calories, the original goal, just because they're sixty pounds overweight, again, would not be to cut calories yeah. yet. It would be yeah. let me build some muscle on you. Let's get your calories up to a place like three thousand. Then maybe let's introduce a tool like Ozempic while we come back the other direction to help you restrict from the I three thousand right, calories. Though. I think it's a massive challenge because protein being as satiating as it is, and then on top of that, like what's the biggest function you're getting from Ozempic is is you know it's eating less. Eating yeah. less. I, I mean that's always been my challenge. Yeah. Is still hitting my protein intake while I'm on these cuts 
I mean, that, so I mean, I, I, don't, I mean, I, maybe that's not, maybe it's not resonating with a lot of people, and this is well, just yeah. me because they're losing overall size, you know. And I think people are probably just focused on that portion of it. When in fact, if you do get into that uh, percentage of the ratios, and you really see what it is that you're left with, it's kind of alarming. Here's where the medical community screws up all the time. They always screw up here is that they oversell and they're not honest. If they were just honest and they said, hey, some aglutide actually can be quite effective in combination with mm -hmm. or used as a tool with, sure. but instead they sell it as the answer. And what's going to end up happening is they're going to sell a ton of them, obviously. There's no money in honesty, Sal. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's terrible. We've known this. It makes me so it makes me so mad because if they just sold it honestly, you know what's yeah. funny? We've proved this. This is bullshit. I don't, you know what? Here, here, I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> no, we didn't prove it. Yes, we we we'd be way richer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we lied. I mean, maybe I guess you're right. We lie to get them into honest shit, you know? You know? <laughs> well, look, hey, look. Hey, true. Hey, this is time to be honest here, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we've worked with many sponsors who when they first start working with us, um, so we have an interesting relationship with our sponsors. It's interesting because they let us do whatever we want because we deliver. Uh, but here's what's interesting about it is in the beginning of our relationship, especially before- Yeah, this was early days. Before not, we not really- Not so much now. Yeah, now we have a reputation. So everybody's like, do, do your thing, you know, just sell, sell it however you want. But in the beginning, they would hear us on the podcast, be very honest about a product. So we'd say something like, oh yeah, this really- you know, gave me energy, but it tastes, you know, tastes really bad. Or yeah, you know, this is kind of good, but my gut issues, you know, it didn't really affect my gut very well. They're like, don't say that. You're mm -hmm. not going to sell any products. And we ended up selling a lot because our audience is like, we trust you. You're being yeah. honest. Like I experienced the same thing. Yeah. So we're, we're just, you know, we're trying to prove that you could be honest and sell products, but I guess you're right, Adam. We, if we lied, we probably sold more. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, who maybe, knows? maybe you're right. It's a, maybe in the, maybe over the course of a decade or two decades, in right? The short I mean, it's term, a, it's a slower, it's a slower process. But maybe in the long run, like because I think a lot of times those those people that do stuff like that, they may have a good run uh, initially, but it, eventually that stuff comes full circle. I'll, and then I'll tell you what, yeah. right now, if I was uh, if I if if I still trained people, and I had a client who had uh, just unlimited funds in the sense that they're like, look, I'll invest whatever it takes. I really want to solve this issue. What should I do? I'd say, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to train with me. And then depending on their fitness and stuff would be something like two to three days a week. So you're going to train with me two to three days a week. Um, and I'm also going to work with you through text for nutrition. So it's going to be a lot of touch points. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to have you get a CGM so that we can start identifying blood sugar issues and identifying them to, you know, connecting them to how you feel and stuff like that. And then we're going to use some aglutide to help with the appetite um, and to kind of give us training wheels in the yeah. beginning. That's that's exactly to, what I would to do. To help break some patterns. Yes, yeah. and then I would work with those things, and I think my success rate would be phenomenal. But if you had to take any of those things out of the picture, uh, it wouldn't be me. That'd be the last thing. I, I wouldn't be like, yeah, just get the CGM and semaglutide, or just do the semaglutide. Like, no, no, no. The, the, yeah. the main ingredient is the is that we're going to work on these things and, and figure out a way to do it in a sustainable way. So, I mean, to be clear, it is an effective uh, intervention. <clears throat> it is not, it is not going to cure anything. It's not the easy. end all. All right. Today's giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win that program. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we got a sale going on this month. Two programs are 50% off. MAPS Anabolic, half off, and MAPS Split, half off. Both of them 50% off. If you are interested, just click to the on the to, on the link at the top of the description below. And then, by the way, you got to use the code April50 for that discount. All right, back to the show. Hey, That's I wanted sure. to ask um, Doug and Justin, since this was your guys' uh, first like big NCI event, the last two years, mm. Sal and I went. And mm. so this was your guys' first. And by the way, you guys got the cool hotel. We like, uh, yeah. Jason, Jason is <laughs> you like- You said you had a little of the older one last Yeah, time, yeah. So. No, the last, the, the previous two years. Uh, and it was like, it was still a Sheraton. It was a, a, a nice place. It was just an old, <coughs> older place, you guys smaller, know Adam. smaller venue. <laughs> you guys know Adam. A little less bougie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And I was like, he, he yeah. needs to have the gold-plated yeah. toilet. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, Jason doesn't know yet that I upgraded my room to a suite <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on his credit card. He knows now. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a big mini bar. I got you, Dave. You know, yeah. it's only a couple hundred. Why'd you upgrade dude? yours, not ours, Doug? Uh, yeah, that's, they didn't have any. Oh, oh they didn't have any. That was the last one. Uh, I did the last one. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyways, uh, this event was, I mean, Jason just keeps leveling this event up every single time. I remember the very first one Sal and I went to. Was every year, they're just so much bigger. Oh, they, like doubles, right? Yep. So what, what was it like for you guys being the first year that you guys got to go do it? Well, I mean, for me, it was really kind of powerful to be there with all these other coaches and like-minded people that were like very much in tune with our message and like asking us really cool questions. Like, it, I, I think that was probably one of the best Q&A sessions we've had, uh, which was, you know, it's saying a lot because we've done a lot of those before, but I just felt like because we've had those coaching calls, yeah. I think with like a good percentage of the people that were there, yeah. um, we've already had kind of that rapport. And then we actually had people that were in there that have never even listened to one podcast of ours that were just like, hooked you know oh, just based cool. off of the 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 q a session so i felt like that it just felt it felt like good energy it was electric and then um you know it was not enough it was just like it i felt like we were there for maybe like five minutes but it was like an hour and it just went like that yeah and then we just it was just like a big kind of whirlwind is was my experience and then going outside and just like trying my best to like uh intentively focus on one person at a time and hear their story and like you know uh what's going on in their life and and how we can we can all kind of like attack this health thing together uh it was really cool man it was it was great it was great like exhausting but like filling up at the same time yeah that's oh. a, that's always a weird feeling right yes. like you get this you're on this high and your cup is filled so much, but then it drains. Physically tired. Yeah, physically yeah, tired. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted today. Like every yeah. the next the next day, getting back, and then the next like. It, well, we eat. stood in the same spot for like four and a half, five hours, just talking to people as they approached us one after another. Yeah, mm -hmm. and each person is invigorating because uh, you know they're all coaches and. You know, they're all very passionate about fitness and helping people. And, and so it's just such a difference, though, like a physical, like in-person oh, contact. Like it's just no comparison. That exchange is is a completely different feel. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, about you, Doug? Doug? Yeah. So you guys, you know, you got caught over there in the corner. And uh, early on, I said, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to go float around and just talk to people. And I was shocked by the number of people who had never heard the sh about the show. Yeah. Um, and I talked to a few of them, which was a lot of fun. You yeah. know, a lot of the people, they, I think, found the uh, event online. Maybe an ad popped up and they liked the speakers. Alex Hormozzi, of course, being one of the big draws. Yeah. Uh, one, one guy actually flew all the way from Taiwan. Yes. Knew oh, nothing right. about our show. That that was wild to me. Yeah. And so it was super cool. He became cool. a fan right after. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. So I met all these people, super positive people. You know, obviously people are looking to better themselves and improve and themselves. And it wasn't just about fitness either. So uh, I met this one young guy. He is uh, 20 years old. He's in real estate. And he saw Alex Hormozzi. So he, I'm going to come to this event. Yeah, yeah. So I talked to him. So he wasn't even into mm -hmm. fitness, but he's a subscriber now to Mind Pump, of course. That's right. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed. I mean, I always enjoy any type of live event that we do where we can actually interact with people who li listen to the show or even not. And uh, it's always, like you say, very energizing, but it's also very exhausting as well because, man, sometimes you get cornered and they'll talk their your ear off and you can't escape and you want to be polite and you don't want to yeah. go away, but then you understand there's other people that you probably want to talk to. So, uh, but I, I super, I, I enjoyed it for yeah, sure. Yeah, I had fun, man. Yeah, no, it was great. It, it was such a blast. No, over 700 people they had this time, yeah. which that was, that was a lot. Yeah. I didn't, you, you know, we could, because we got, we only got about 10 feet into that venue area before the whole line started. I didn't get a chance to really walk around like you did. Mm -hmm. And I saw videos afterwards. Like, yeah, really put into perspective how many people were there. I mean, there was a, I gotta, I gotta tell this story. It's, it, it, towards the end of the night, the, <laughs> this, we, I mean, we were, again, we walk in huge room and then a line form. So we just stood in the same place for four and a half hours, talking to people, hugging people. It was a good time. And at the very end, the, <laughs> this, this couple comes up and, uh, uh, you know, I'll be nice, right? So they come up. You don't have to be nice. Uh, well, I'm not going to go into the main stuff. So. <laughs> they don't even listen to the show. Yeah, That's so their, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They come up and they pitch us. They start pitching us about their business. And I'm like, and I, as they're pitching, I can tell you never heard the show before. So I'm like, how many episodes have you listened to? Like, oh, I've heard clips. I'm like, oh, okay. That's what I thought. And so apparently they do like energy work, like over the phone. They heal your 
issues. It's like magic. That's why I said it. So it sounds like magic. She's yeah. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like it's, over Skype? It really works. Wow, your powers are anyway, really extend. Anyway, so we're trying to be polite. I was surprised Adam didn't turn into an asshole right away. I was like, man, Adam's really nice right now. I was waiting for Adam to be like, get the fuck out of here. I'll do his thing. Right? Yeah. So then they finally leave. We, we were, were in too good a mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, in a good yeah, mood. I know. I was dude. in a very good mood. You were, dude. They, they, they couldn't, yeah. they didn't yeah. kick you off that. So then we were, they were done. They left. Whatever. Anyway, next morning, we're exhausted. We get up. We got to get on a plane. They find us. She approaches me, and I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, here we go. She's going to pitch me again, dude. Right? You, know, you know, A for F. I mean, I guess, you know, we got to keep trying. Yeah. She comes up, and she goes, hey, I did an energetic, uh, what does she call it? Like an energetic assessment of you and Adam. And here's <laughs> all the issues that I found. And she pulls up her phone, and she has a list of ailments. She had like little beauty dolls. You Bro, can <laughs> it was a list of ailments, and she shows me. <laughs> now, and she goes, this one's yours. Now, had it blown my mind. I would have been like, you know what? This is really weird, right? Not fucking one was accurate. Oh, man. There were like 15 oh. things on Wait, You say like one. You say one. You're you say even one, like one, giving her a chance. Bro, the one that everybody has. <laughs> well, you know, what I, you, you know what I wanted you to do? I wish you would have kept it because I bet you could right after that, Google, what are the top 20 uh, I- I- yeah. <laughs> issues that people have? She was like, like a Pepto-Bismol commercial. She's like, you know? have, you have <laughs> right leg weakness. Your, your wrist hurts. Your, your, you have your vision on your left. Like weird shit. And I'm going down the list. And I just literated what I did in front of her. I went, no, 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 no. As I'm going down the list, I'm yeah. like, none of these, actually. None of these apply. Yeah. Oh, that's because I didn't get your permission to do the energetic or whatever. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Come Dang. on, man. God, that's annoying. <laughs> so uh, no. And you know what? Look, she tried like, twice. I'm losing my powers. But uh, please, get yeah, the yeah. magic stuff out of here. Yeah. Anyway, that was a. Um, it was such a great event. My favorite at, at the end of the night, though, we were all done. We escaped. Just the four of us went by the pool, hung out. And uh, I, you know, I hadn't done this with you guys in a while. We're all just hanging out. Oh, uh, it was night. a good time, yeah. And we started telling stories. And fucking Justin, bro, that story, I forgot all about. Which one? I told Jessica we were on the floor last night. The oh. one I want you to tell a story of when Which you were one? in class and you were writing the note. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Bro. oh yeah. I told I Jessica, thought, bro, we I were on told, the floor. You told her a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah, this podcast. is the best story I've ever heard in my life. You were in sixth grade? Yeah. yeah. Something prompted it though. We were talking about oh, we were talking about getting caught with stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, how you yeah, freak yeah, out and yeah, yeah, panic yeah, and yeah, shit yeah. like that. Talking about getting caught with the, the Yeah, because I mean we had our like sort of I got caught, you know, is whacking off and we, that's how it all started <laughs> <laughs> that was the direction right. of this conversation just Adam wasn't going to say that yeah. I, I'm just I'm, I'm trying, trying to paint the conversation I'm trying to paint the picture for the audience I, you know, yeah. trying to, oh, okay. I'm getting in. too much of a picture here yeah. 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 but this this story has nothing to do with that so no, but that's that. how it started we that's how it started telling crazy stories like that right and so I was like yeah so I was in 6th grade and uh, so my teacher Miss Bowie um <laughs> I don't even like. I feel bad talking because this is this is like I was like a a little asshole with this. Like I admit it. Like I was like you know I you was making fun. Kid. Like I, you know, and I. You don't have to share how how mean the. Note I don't want to say the, the <laughs> yeah, what, what the content all, was because yeah. it was mean. Yeah. You know, it was mean, but it was like you know, asshole mean. You know, so it was like funny. No, it but it was, it was just mean, bro. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. But everybody us. laughed, you know. Yeah. Like, okay, I was you're a sixth grade boy, dude. That's I was it. working through yeah. all that. I was young. I didn't really know. Like, anyway, so yeah, I wrote this uh, poem that was basically like, you know, trying to make fun and poke fun at the uh, some things about the teacher, and and, uh, and so it was like passing its way around the class, everybody's and like laughing. everybody's laughing, ha ha. And the teacher like was like, what what's going on over here? And and points it out, and like I have the paper in my hand. And just like froze. She's and like, like, give it to me. Yeah, give me that paper. Give me that paper right now. I'm like, no. <laughs> She's like, no, you give me that paper. You're going to go to the principal's office if you don't give me that paper. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, I'm going to the principal's office anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my parents are getting called. Like, yeah. this is all bad. Yeah, wait till she reads There's it. some <laughs> serious stuff in this letter. <laughs> like, I'm not going down <laughs> with this letter. And so she just kept, give it to me and like starts coming over and like reaching for it. And then I just boom, right in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Chewed it up like. To the it's like, no, give me that. And like, she was actually trying to like fish for it, like in my mouth. <laughs> and I just chewed up as best as I could and just swallowed the whole, whole thing whole. <laughs> totally convinced that these are his gut issues. Today. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like there's some dye in there yeah, that probably got, stayed. He's got mead paper and double, number, number two pencil in his yeah. fucking gut line. Well, still. Yeah, I got half a tree in here, like stuck. He literally ate it, like chomped it, swallowed it. 
and that was it. Yeah. But if you think about it, brilliant. Like, yeah. what are they going to do? I mean, there's Nothing. no evidence. Now they have to guess. Like, yeah. what was on that paper? Well, for sure, whatever. The, I don't she know. She knew it was bad. Was. Bro, the punishment was way lighter than yeah. what it would have been had he got caught. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, oh, I ended yeah, up bro. just having to stay outside the rest of the class. Right, she right. Because like, she can't prove what was on She it. thought it was probably like a like a you know dirty picture, like a note or like yeah. a love well, note or yeah. something embarrassing. Oh. Not that you were talking about her personal issues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you so ate it, dude. And swallowed it. Oh, I was, uh, hey, I got home last night. I was talking to Jessica. She's like, "How'd it go?" And then I told her that story. Bro, we were on the floor, yeah, dying. But I, I mean, that's again, that's a brilliant move. That's now, are like, you guys okay? So that's funny. You, I was you, when yeah. you guys get back from that. I'm really bad at this. I'm so exhausted. I, I love, I love that. You know, Katrina and I've been together for so long. So she and she's been through this with me enough times that she don't even ask me because I'm like so. You're so tired. I'm so tired. Yeah. I don't even want to talk or and even like the, the like the flow of it. Like it hasn't even all settled for me. And so she don't even like pry that much. Like, oh, how was? She'll ask me like the generic question. Like, how was? Was it good? Did you like it? Oh yeah, it was great. You know, and then and then it'll be like a, two days later that I'll start sharing stories yeah. with her of like all the, how everything all played out. Cause I'm like, if you try and pull it out of me right then and there, it says it doesn't go so well. Another thing that was awesome. This yeah. had nothing to do with the event. The event was obviously amazing, but, uh, we haven't all worked out together in like five years, years. This was the first one in years where yeah. we actually didn't go to the gym and then just, just like, like separate. We the actually same exercises. did the same yeah. workout together. That was great. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Dude. That was I'll a good honest. time. Yeah, you were was, a good sport too. It was fun, dude. Yeah, because we were taking you through straight bodybuilding. Yeah, <laughs> light lightweight. How hard just to want to add weight to everything? I yeah. did. <laughs> I was like, oh, was just... I mean, it was a pretty weak sauce workout. Let's be honest. Yeah, it was yeah, just like just get a, good a little pump. pump and hang out yeah. and stuff like that. But it's still, we hadn't done that in forever. That it was, was actually fun. just Doug's ass that yeah. wasn't with us. Yeah. yeah. Doug went you off notice the pattern here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always doing my own thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug, Doug left and did his own rogue. thing. Rogue. Yeah. yeah. Rogue. And then we, I mean, we went in the pool, dude. That was like, I mean, we actually like did things. I didn't go in the pool. You guys did. Uh, yeah, we did. We sat in there. Yeah, yeah, you guys went. The pool's nice. It's yeah. Nice. The, I mean, it's the whole hot. hotel, that hotel, you know, shout out to the Sheraton downtown Phoenix. So was, that's a really, that's a really, that whole area was nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the one, the one thing that's funny. So this is before Sal got there, which is ironic because I think there's this is a second or third time where we're on a mission to go find like Wagyu steak when Sal's not with us. And we mm -hmm. go we go drop like a thousand bucks on steak on the nights that Sal's not around. Bunch of jerks. <laughs> so that's kind of like a thing, right? So what's become- When I'm with you guys, we get tacos. What's, what's become a tradition <laughs> for us is when we- Fly into new cities or new areas that we've never been. We we one of the one of the treats that we we do is we find like a really the, the best steakhouse we can in the city or town that we're in. And Did go, you guys actually find one? Well, so listen to the okay. story, Sal. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> what I'm telling I'm you right now. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it's just like it's you want to keep talking or what? You hey. want to tell the story? <laughs> yes. You want to tell the story for everybody? I'm jump in. <laughs> yeah. There's a timer going off right now <laughs> in my head. <laughs> Say something. So Doug goes over, and he knows, Doug knows this. And Justin and I aren't even down yet. So Doug, Doug does this, what I would say the smart thing to do is go talk to the concierge, right? So he goes over to the concierge and says, hey, we're looking for the best steak around. Like, you know, where, do, where, where can we get a good steak, you know? Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, you know, there's this place called, was it Antagonist? No, the Arrogant Butcher. Arrogant, Arrogant, Butcher. Arrogant Butcher, which sounds like. Close. Yeah, <laughs> Antagonistic <laughs> Butcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was. Whatever. You walk obviously, in. Hey, asshole. Obviously, yeah. it wasn't the very cocky cook. <laughs> memorable, yeah. right, for me to remember okay. the name that well. So she tells us she tells the name. We're all excited. We're walking down to this place. And, uh, and I mean, Doug kind of got the feel as soon as we got there. He's like, yeah, this doesn't quite feel like the white tablecloth, you know, Japanese five Wagyu steak that we're going to get here. It was like an Outback Steakhouse? Totally. Oh, basically, yeah. it was. It's, I mean, it was better that than that. I don't want to I don't want to shit on it that bad because I, I had this like pretzel and cheese appetizer that was phenomenal. And I had this like uh, breaded chicken dish that was pretty good. Um, but I mean, it, not even the same universe as like a steakhouse that like we really yeah. wanted. So that was like a, bi a big letdown. I just thought that was so yeah. funny that the concierge of all people, when Doug asked for like the best steak, they probably looked at you guys like, uh, what can they afford? Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> look bro we look broke. We look broke. They saw you guys in your, <laughs> we your, definitely downplay your, your sweat <laughs> shorts. Lot, you know, I know that was the gym hey, I, outfit. I'm not even, that. so I'm not even, uh, I don't know about you guys, but my house, uh, or like I don't have in my dresser and in my, I, I pack away all summer stuff in the winter and 
and then vice versa when the summer comes. Summer cup stuff comes out in my drawers. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have all summer stuff out yet. It's still, I mean, it's what, 63 here today? It's mm -hmm. still very cool oh, weather. I'm rocking these shorts, dude. You guys are welcome. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you, you wear shorts all the time, bro. Yeah, you wear it even in the yeah, winter. You're like that weird kid in school who would wear a, a parka and short. Remember that kid in school? Oh, yeah. Justin? He is totally that guy. Yeah, I never legs, I've that. seen him like that. I don't before. care about legs. It's, it, yeah, it's just the upper body. I got to keep a bit warm. I mean, if. Hey, if I, I had get it. Hey, if I had ham hawks like that, no. I'd wear shorts all the time. Wait, too. your legs don't feel cold? Not, not really. Really? I mean, my if I get my feet cold, then I'm screwed. Like my whole body's cold. But like, well, yeah, at least you're not wearing good. sandals. Jesus yeah, Christ, no, if you did that, I'd be I really don't do the weird. Jesus sandals in the in the parka. That's, <laughs> that's not saw, a good look. If I saw you walk around in flip flops, uh, I'd be a little. No. Yeah, okay, so I don't have I don't have any of my summer stuff up. So I'm like literally all the shorts I grab. That's it's like the my nighttime before bed shorts in the house I wear. So literally pajama shorts. Yeah, like pajama shorts. <laughs> this is what I had for like the week. But I saw the yeah. weather and I'm like, fuck it, I ain't wearing pants out there, dude. Yeah. It's like 95 plus no. out there. Well, it's, guys know, it's time, dude. You guys know me, man. I love the heat. So I go out in that sun and I'm like, oh, let me yeah. just stay in the sun. Ugh. Dude, we were talking earlier about like uh, like feeding the kids like fancy food oh, and whatnot. Like, it, does Jessica make like a real elaborate breakfast? Well, just, I, I've been you know giving Courtney a bit of grief for this. Well, it's just we you know we got a two year old and we try to say no uh, or save no for when it really counts, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they start to like push it and all that stuff. <laughs> when so, is that? Huh? When is that? <laughs> yeah. Well, like if he's gonna hurt himself or okay. like it's just just getting ridiculous or whatever. But when it comes to food... So if he wants filet mignon for breakfast, that's not like a no? That's not like a hard no? Well, it depends, right? <laughs> so this morning for breakfast, she sent me a picture of this kid's breakfast. Yeah. It's like a lamb chop and like grapes sliced in half and hummus <laughs> and crackers. You know he's specific. He was very specific. Yeah. Yeah, mama, I want, you know, bop, yeah. bop, bop, bop. So oh, that's she, funny. Yeah, I made it for him. So she sent me a picture. She goes, yeah, it's getting a little excessive. I said, I think so. He yeah. thinks he lives in a far five-star hotel. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Like, especially, like, Ethan's always been kind of like that. He's like a big foodie, like, just loves. Because if we'll go somewhere, I'm always, like, conscious, like, oh, he's going to want a version of that at home at some point. Right. And so like, <laughs> so for instance, they have bacon all the time in their sandwiches, you know, and I'm like, you get bacon like just for like your re go like, like your turkey, turkey sandwich. Yeah. And your turkey sandwich and whatever. I'm like, I'm like, this is crazy. I go into the refrigerator the other day and I'm looking, I'm like, what is this? There's a jar and like, you know, normally yeah, you'll put mayonnaise on bread, whatever for a sandwich. It was chipotle aioli, and I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, dad, that's my chipotle aioli. I like that on my sandwich. I'm like, who I didn't are know you? What that was. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's you're so fancy. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you remember I the didn't know how to deal with that. Remember the sandwiches we ate when we were kids? Yeah. yeah. It was Wonder Bread. It was PB and J, and like, oh, bro, it was Wonder Bread. It was mayonnaise. Craft single cheese Ugh. and a slice of bologna, which is basically just flat hot dog. <laughs> yeah, and that was it. That was your sandwich. Ugh. Yeah, actually, kind of good. I, I mean, I, I like. I'm I'm happy for them, but also it's like <laughs> kind of like thrown in my face. Like, I didn't have like only. Oh, hey, talk goodness. about food. You guys see uh, McDonald's? What? You guys see the news on McDonald's yet? Oh, they do. Oh, you did it. Okay, so pull this. Well, I, saw get, I saw a layoff. They, uh, so hold on, let me lot, guess. Lot, let me guess. Did they get the same uh, spokesperson Bud Light did? They no, the same no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Oh. Listen, Las Las Vegas. <laughs> that wouldn't go well. Okay, no. Las, Las Vegas, Fort Worth, and I believe Denver are the three cities. Full uh, automation. Yep. Well, One hundred. No humans. There you go. Wow. Pull it up, Doug. You got me, Andrew? Yet? I mean. This is kind I'm of tired, where you know, I'm just, I saw I was, things I, I'm, moving. I'm grabbing questions for the call. That's why, that's why I said, yeah. Andrew, I got it. I got you. I'm stuck behind ads. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at both. I got you both oh, watching porn ads right now. No, <laughs> come on. <laughs> really? What are the chances? We, yeah, we, we need a third guy now? We need a third guy? Where's Dylan? Get Dylan in here. Old hot women in your area. You sign up. test system that could change the fast food industry, bro. Yeah. yeah, I saw an article this morning, and I'm pretty sure it was. I it's know all sure. fully automated, so it's all. No humans. Not at all. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's that makes perfect sense. It's, uh, you know, if you can provide that you know, service bro, just, at a just low cost Just for a second, for though, think owner. about how much that is. Oh, wow, look at that. Think how much this is going to shake things up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, okay. What do you mean, well? I, you know how many, do, do the math on Burger King, a Taco Bell, of all the fast food restaurants, how many of them, how many people work for them? You're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. yeah, you're not talking about a few people. Well, look, okay. Here's the deal: inefficiency and everything improves. Okay, we got it. Right? Yeah, we got to be clear on this because this is going to be if it's not already politicized. Okay, 
automation of stuff like this. McDonald's? Huh? How do you politicize McDonald's? Uh, you, what do you mean? You don't see, you don't, you can't see the easy There's political. A ton of employee. Come on, yeah, bro. Look, that. you have on one end, the right is to be like, this is what happens when you raise minimum wage. Okay. Uh-huh. On the left, yeah. this is the 1% getting rid of jobs. So now that, okay. So that's, it's right. going to be a politicized issue if it's not already. Here's the truth. Obviously, it's somewhere, somewhere in the middle. It was inevitable. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Look at this video. Yeah. It, it's an, it was inevitable that stuff like this become automated. Inevitable. In other words, going to happen no matter what. Yeah. Now, raising minimum wage only made it happen faster because the cost of automating became less expensive than the artificial bottom floor for you know paying people. So that's did you that's see? Just a fact. Did you see the thing that I checked out on it at the airport yesterday? No. Oh, dude. So you know how like a uh, self checkout line, which that's not like crazy. We've no. seen those everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But that's this so cool. new one, I, I was I, the guy had to come over and explain it to me because it was like I didn't I've never seen one like this. He's all no no just put it all on there. Yeah. It's so not you, like an individual bar. Like, I don't thing have to where scan, scan anything. I just, just put, put them it all on this thing together. and there's like and it, there's it. Calculate, oh, wow. Calculated they, all of my. I already knew what all the items were. And then wow. it just. All at once. It was a, a one time set oh, that's it all, awesome. Set yeah. it up there, put your card in and pay for it. It's like, where's this been? Yeah. That wow. was my grocery. So, boom, here. Wow, that is really cool. Yes. yes. That is really it's about, cool. It was about the size of maybe half this desk right here. So, whatever you could fit on that, mm -hmm. which is a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You put that all on there and it automatically, instantly calculated all of it in my total. I just card in and out. I you know done. what's interesting? Yeah. So let's so let's talk a little bit more about um, like deeper what this potentially means for business owners. Mm -hmm. When you used to own franchises like McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, you owned the restaurant, but you were also a manager yeah. of lots of employees. Right. These entrepreneurs now that buy these franchises, you know, because what would separate a great McDonald's owner from a bad McDonald's owner was how good you were yeah. at managing your staff and creating a culture, just like any business. But when it's fully automated, you don't need to do any of that stuff. You just... Pop so it open. I, I imagine the upfront cost is going to go up substantially. Yeah, so what, yeah, they'll probably, the machine, yeah. yeah, and they're probably going to. What's it called? Let me they, tell you what sucks, though. Okay, so for, speaking specifically to McDonald's, so one of my long, long term clients was actually a franchise owner. She owned nine of them, her and her dad. <clears throat> and what McDonald's does in situations like this, because they they obviously have innovated and continued to yeah be able to reduce costs on the. They so McDonald's owns so many, and then there, and then there's a percentage of them that are also franchises. And the the company, when they do stuff like this, where it cut costs, they will also cut the costs on the burgers for that, which squeezes the franchise owners. Mm. So like she's always like the the margins for them as franchises, they don't crush. That's why she has nine of them. Like she, in order for her to make really good money, it's she a competitive market. Oh, it's so competitive. Yeah. And and when when stuff like this comes out, and you would think, oh wow, this is gonna save. Mm -hmm. You know the company and the franchise, all this money and stuff like that. No, they just squeeze everything else, mm -hmm. and then that the franchise owner has got it. They, they use have, all that, money and they don't have the they don't it, have yeah. the flexibility to you know raise prices based off demand or whatever. That they have to fall in line with whatever corporate is doing, mm -hmm. and so is as as she's continued to be in this industry for I don't know how many decades now. It's gotten more and more and more difficult. And at one, there was a time when you could own one McDonald's and make a very good living owning just one McDonald's. But she literally has to own like nine of them to to make the kind of living she to, today is what it would be like one just like two decades ago. Well, if you, do you ever mm -hmm. you ever read about the the consumer base of McDonald's? Have you ever read about them? There's like a, a a percentage that are like super regular users that eat there on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and you're. Dealing with the consumer base where um, if the price goes up a little bit, it'll significantly impact them. So it's that plus the fact that you're competing with other chains. You can't, you have to keep the prices low or you're totally screwed. It's not like an expensive chain where <clears throat> like Whole Foods can raise prices and it'll affect them a little bit, but not much. Did you listen to uh, um, our show today yet? What? Our, our favorite podcast? I can't. No, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. wait till you hear this. So somebody has already built on top of ChatGBT called um shit I'm, of course i'm gonna forget the name but now it's fully autonomous oh they're teaching each other 
So you can you can give two of them like <laughs> different skill sets. Look at Justin. And then they they train each other to get a, whatever desired outcome. It's crazy. They're talking about how you can like to like build build a sales team and sales force and everything like that. Like, and then they're one of them is like, okay, you know, to be very empathetic and do these things. The other one, okay, I want you to be able to close, use these these tactics, these, and then they they cross. They work together. They work together and teach each other to build. Like, yeah. wow, it, yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> wow, bro, dude. Yeah. It is crazy. Uh, it's I, like speeding up so fast. Yeah, it is. It's the first time that I've ever uh, that I've ever really considered the fact that we will be um that they will I feel like i need a seatbelt. that yeah. innov innovation will get rid of um pretty much all work mm -hmm. so i mean that's going to leave us with uh, a existential crisis not that we're not going to have money that's the problem everybody thinks we're not going to have money that's not what's going to happen no. it's going to be so efficient it's going to be so much of our work that we'll have money Just people not knowing yeah what that's it so what what jobs do you think are the because I mean, I feel like I could think almost how almost everything is somewhat replaceable, right? Yeah. What 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 do you think are the last to go? Like, I, I with the things that you would think would be the most technical, like you know, brain surgery, so that those will actually go quick. Yep. Because of the precision right. of of yeah. what they can do with right. AI and stuff like that. So okay, that takes out a lot of that crazy stuff. I think like the what? stuff that requires the most human uh, <clears throat> humanity, the most human touch, is going to be the hardest because it's the oh, massage therapy. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. Well, that's um, like, like I, I. Agree. But I mean, my touch is like, uh, like you meet someone and you talk with them. So I don't agree with that. I agree with literal, literal touch. Like that is because you need a human touch to do that. I don't agree just because because they're the AI mm. is being programmed to. Yeah, like her that movie. Yeah, like, did you see that? Where the, yeah. yeah, so it's just got a therapist like in yeah. their ear well, that they talk well, to. Well, like, no, that's what I mean. But, I think yeah. the 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 closer the. Okay, the jobs that require you to really be with someone and meet with someone are going to be the ones that are going to be the last ones to be replaced because there's so much more that goes into I think and making it indistinguishable is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So like a therapist over the phone, that'll get replaced before a therapist in person. Sure. That's what I mean. Sure. Um, but yeah, the technical stuff. Like, I, 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 like would, think, I would actually think it would be more stuff like a plumber. A, a conjure, like uh, things that are more hands on mm -hmm. that will need someone to physically yeah. turn it. Because physical them. robots and in, in that kind that's of gonna thing take a while. That'll take a little while time. too. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, honestly, that's I've said this. You can go back in our podcast of like uh, where I see uh, there being opportunity, and it's really like uh, back in the technical space, and in you know a lot of that, like um, you, you know these like plumbers and electricians. And <laughs> yeah. I literally nailed it. Huh? No, mechanics. no. Yeah. So, so here's what it says in Forbes. They said the jobs that are going to be difficult will be a caring roles as with a nurse or social worker. So that's what I meant, but also business roles where you need an understanding of your clients and then skilled trade work. Yeah. Jobs that require Trades. lots of mobility, dexterity Trades and flexibility schools. in yeah. unpredictable environments like electricians or plumbers. Right. And they make good money, dude. It's just it's just so crazy to me that um, it's, it's been scoffed for so long. Like, uh, you know, these trades, it, they're essential. Yeah. You know, that's what keeps everything running and moving. It's yeah. crazy to me. But I mean, would it be wild if that become those become like the most like high paid jobs? They were the only jobs. I, I hundred yeah. percent. That's that's what where we're, we're moving. Yeah, but I mean, dude, like developers and coders and they're a dime a dozen, and, and plus like AI can do that. Yeah, so, it's gonna it's gonna. This is my prediction. I'm gonna predict that um, at some point they're gonna there's not gonna be any work for people to do. So they're going to have to figure out ways uh, to for people to be taken care of. And so they're going to have like UBI type stuff. Okay. Everybody gets uh, these services. Everybody gets this money. And then people are going to be left with like, what do I do? That's going to be the challenge. What do I do now? Before I had to go to work, that gave me a little bit of a sense of purpose, even though I hated my job or whatever. Mm -hmm. What do I do now? Uh, you know, I don't know. What do I do? I guess I'm going to go paint. I'm going to go read like... You know, people, by the way, people who are listening who are like, that would be a dream. If you look at the research on people who retire, this is a massive challenge. It's not yeah. what you think. People are like, oh, when I, if I were a millionaire, I'd sit on a beach and, and drink Mai Tais all day long. Yeah. For what? For 30 long? days. Yeah. And then you'd lose your mind. You'd have yeah. no, no sense of purpose. So that's going to be the challenge in my opinion. I think that's, you know, kind of where we're. Where we're no, headed. I don't just so yeah. food prices yeah. dramatically going up, staying the same, going down. No, I mean, down, 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 down. <clears throat> yeah, way down. When you start to remove um here and here's the other thing. So currently what gives us efficiency are uh like prices. Prices are amazing signalers to tell us where to allocate resources, what's more valuable, what's less valuable. 
Um, and it really does produce lots of efficiency. That's why markets are so good at what they do. But when you have machines doing the jobs and communicating with each other, you can multiply that times a million. Now supply and demand is instant, 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 instant. And they're going to be able to be so efficient with how much food they produce, when they deliver it, how it goes bad, where it needs to go. It's going to, it'll, it'll drop the price of everything. Everything's going to be much, much less expensive. Not to mention, you're, we're going to get to a place real soon here. We're going to be able to make, you know, these f fake meat, fake burgers, and all robots are going to be able to do it. It's going to mm -hmm. be very yeah. little humans to do it. So that's going to be super cheap to do Meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, California has this idea that we should bring grizzly bears back. What? I heard you say that. What? Can you believe that? Wait, wait, what? Like, is, do you guys think that's a good idea? What do you mean? They're going to bring grizzly bears and throw them in the woods here? Yeah, they think that, like, <laughs> Why? they want to bring them back in, Why? in, in this natural habitat of like what a thousand something years ago they were here uh i i think they so they reintroduced wolves like in like yellowstone yeah. and like so they had some bit of success but think about how densely populated that is it's not there's nothing but free open land like all over the place like for hundreds of miles yeah it's so like you, <clears throat> think about california where is there like humongous open uh, plots Just of land anymore. It's like Sierra Nevadas. It's about it. It's barely like that. even that. But yeah. like, where are these bears gonna go? <laughs> in everybody's backyard, in their house, like they're gonna be mauling people left and right. Yeah, because because so uh, I don't understand what's the why are, are, are they uh, are, are grizzly bears are, are they going? I think it's some environmental like sort of initiative. Uh, but what's the point though? Is it yeah, because yeah, they I mean. used to be here, or is it because yeah, it's gonna I, serve some envi right. environmental purpose? Yeah, I think. It, uh, yeah, they're trying to justify. I I think because they're trying to control they're, they're, they're not letting us do a lot of um uh, hunting here and like there's very minimal amounts of uh, uh deer hunting and all these other types of uh like it's the population's out of control with of, that of deer of deer i, I oh. believe but it's honestly like just open up more of the hunting and that'll like reduce it down so it's like <laughs> bringing grizzly bears back like it just <laughs> There's nothing but potential problems. We would I bring see. back dinosaurs if we could. Yeah, they used to That's live how here. Stupid we are. Let's put some dinosaurs out here. And see what <laughs> yeah, <happens. laughs> the T Rex. I don't, like, I don't know, dude. Like just these ideas. It's just I, 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 just, I can't believe like it gets crazier. Uh, every day I wake well, up. Well, it's you, like what, what I think we talked about before with like, you know, science, you know, science doesn't question whether we should, they just question if we can. Yeah. And so it's like, Oh, if we can, let's do it. You what know does what that say, Doug? Yeah. Is that, is so, it, yeah, I pulled it up. There's oh. definitely a petition going on. They want to bring it back to California. Basically, they're just endangered right now. They have them at about 1,500, 1,800 today, and they, they're thinking that it's going to triple the population of them. And they want to bring them back to the home of the American West, essentially. Mm. And, Instead so is of it, is uh, it, Alaska, where there's a lot more land. You know, right, well, that, that's where most of people. them are, is Alaska, right? Yeah. I would, I and I so is, is the population of them declining? Yes. Yes, it's, I mean, in, they haven't been in California apparently since 1920s. Yeah, yeah, yeah for a little while. There you go. Um, I mean, until they start eating people's did we dogs. Did we intentionally eradicate yeah. them? Not we did. Well, we just hunted not on purpose. Just, we just hunted the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah. that would be intentionally eradicated. They're monsters, dude. I mean, like if you have one of those in your backyard, like, it, <laughs> and your kids are playing outside. Like, uh, so I had a trainer. Are you me? I had a trainer I used to live in Alaska. Um, and, um, she said, you walk around with a sidearm, mm -hmm. like a, like a, like a 45, uh, caliber sidearm because yeah. grizzly, Dude, they it's, don't fuck around. It's not like worried, a black bear. Isn't in Alaska, aren't they worried more about moose than they are, um, actual grizzly bears? Aren't moose like scarier? I heard moose, like, oh, like they're way more they're like, uh, aggressive, super right? dangerous. You ever yeah. seen a moose? Not in, like, like close. Like, what? Like seen a, a ton away. to like two tons. Like, it's the biggest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, I huge. saw one in it's person. It's comically once. big, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen them in Alaska, but I've never been like yeah. up, up. I was I was in a, a canoe <laughs> and it was like uh, coming down for a drink, and I saw just like trees bending over as it was like making its way. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, this thing is big. They're giant. If you Here, ever see one, here's a fun fact: in North America, moose attack more people than bears and wolves see, combined. I knew that. But that's because yeah. there's oh, more moose, right? See, I, I knew that. that. Probably about the moose. Well, no, they're they're also aggressive. But yeah. worldwide, do you know what animal hurts the most people? Hippos. Hippos, hippos you're right. Yeah, yeah they're the hippos. most aggressive. That's because hippos are aggressive. Yeah, look how big that moose is. Yeah, they'll Whoa. flip a car over. Do you, have you guys ever seen the video? There's like people on a, I don't know what it is, like a riverboat somewhere, and there's a hippo kind of far away, and it dives under, 
And the guy's like, he hits the gas because he knows. And then you see it pop up because it's swimming after them. Like, yeah, and it's like going to take him out. Have you seen yeah. that video? Oh, was it in a fishing boat? Yeah. It was in some kind of a yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we all shared that actually just the other day. We were talking about that. Terrifying. Yeah, oh, yeah. Terrifying. Anyway, I want to uh, tell you guys about some of the value of having a, a massive family like myself, like myself. So I have such a huge family that I never run out of opportunities to come up with commercials for our, our sponsors. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what you should Just do? try out you every one of I do. on them. I yeah. do. I saw you, I, you maybe, I saw you, um, the, you had a picture of just from Easter of like the the tire family. Oh yeah, you know, it'd be funny. It would be to uh, draw a line and like what supplement they're all taking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you can see, see all the products. No Easter, that, we did that it. Being pushed yeah. on everybody. Yeah, mean no, juice. we yeah, yeah, yeah we right took it. my grandma yeah. took a picture with just her grandkids and great grandkids. It wasn't even her kids. A huge picture. But anyway, my aunt, um, who she's been trying to figure out why she kind of gets dizzy, can't perform well, uh, she gets headaches. And um, she's a registered dietitian. And I said, it sounds like you need more sodium. She's like, no, no, I get enough sodium or whatever. I said, I, I, I think this, why don't you give it a shot or whatever? So I sell her, I sent her some, uh, uh, I know, I sell, <laughs> sell it. No, she, I give it to her for free so <laughs> she didn't buy it. <laughs> it's one of the perks of being I give it to her for half off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I Just sent her. Uh, I sell my clients. I sent her yeah. Element. I, oh, I sell my family <laughs> all the time. I sent her Element and it, it completely, that's it. All her issues were gone from that. She's like, I didn't realize I wasn't having enough sodium. And I said, you know, you um, you were brainwashed so hard by the medical industry. <laughs> did you yeah. say that? I did. You did? Because she knows it. Because you guys have, I mean, this is the aunt that you've gone kind of back and forth with in the for, past. A, for a long time, right? In the past. Oh, so she's now like Oh, yeah. She, because she trusts you now. now. Your opinion. Not just me, but she's done it herself. She's seen herself, uh, like okay. how the recommendations are garbage. Yeah. And I said, look at the studies on sodium. And ex ex except for like special percentage of the population, uh, you know, people need more. That, that below it's two crazy grams. how demonized the uh, salt has been. Dude, look at the studies on migraines and sodium and dizziness and sodium and all-cause mortality and sodium. When you take out the special populations of people who are really sensitive or sick, it's like not only is two grams, uh, that recommendation, too little, it's actually bad to have that little for a lot of people. So she just added a packet, did her yoga class, and right away she texted me. She's like, uh, totally gone. Yeah. All of it gone. This is something she's been trying to figure out for years. That's, That's awesome. Great. That's awesome. All right. I have uh, a shout out for us. Um, in I, I, It's probably somebody who's super famous, so a lot of people already know. But it was somebody who I definitely did not consume any of his content, say, two, three years ago it's and before. Kevin Hart. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Russell Brand. I love his stuff now, and I used to. He's so sharp. He is, oh, yeah. and funny. Yeah, like I, I he, love his content. I love his stuff now, and I didn't care for it that yeah. long ago. And I feel like in the last two to three years, he's literally been like just. A, he's a great voice of reason, and mm -hmm. he's hilarious the way he does it. I've seen. I've watched several interviews too when he gets on some of these political shows. Super and sharp and witty. He is, yeah. dude. He is, I, some, I know he's a bit of a word salad sometimes, but it's still mm -hmm. hilarious to listen to him. So if you are not following him, I agree. watch some of his content. I agree 100%. Yeah. Hey, check this out. The perfect gut-friendly clean protein snack for the go is here. Paleo Valley makes meat sticks that are grass-fed, delicious, and not dry. They have a lot of other amazing uh, supplements and products as well. For example, they have a bone broth that's chocolate flavored that tastes better than anything I've ever had in my life when it comes to protein powders. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Anyway, go check this company out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 15 for 15% off your first order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from Lee Pollock. What's more important for building muscle reps or load and tempo? Uh, well, all of them, above. yeah, all of them build muscle. I think, uh, in, as a beginner, you probably are going to, um, get the most out of load and reps. Um, tempo starts to become more important as you become a little bit more advanced, but you know, the reason why I don't like questions like yeah, this, I, I don't you, like the, I don't even like that as that. an answer yeah. because, yeah, because now someone's going to take that and right. well, not only, it. Yeah. Not only that, but I, uh, I think I've said this before in the past, like one of my favorite things to manipulate or focus on when I have a, a, a new client is tempo, not because I think it elicits the most gains, but because at that time in the, their, their journey, I think, 
putting emphasis on the Helps form. You sharpen the mechanics. Yeah, and, it, what a great yeah. way to sharpen. And, and, and by the way, I, I know that I'm also progressively overloading by slowing the tempo down. So I do know that I'm eliciting some gains and some benefits from it. But more importantly, I'm really honing in on their mechanics on the exercise. And so I make that hmm. decision. Maybe if I would have loaded it with an extra 50 pounds, I could probably elicit more growth. Yeah. But that's not the goal at that time. Yeah, so. I could I could say like in in terms of order of operation, this isn't like this is totally general like advice. But like I would is I would take somebody in. It would be more of a tempo driven, just because I'm I'm so geared in technique. looking technique and yeah. yeah, looking any kind of instability or something we need to address. Then I'm considering reps because now we're just kind of working our way through those that technique and we're, we're practicing it. Right. And the, really the big emphasis is on the practice of it. I'm not, you know, quite loading it substantially yet. Now, after I, they master that, we're going into more of a heavier loading situation. But I think that would be sort of my, yeah, I think a good sequence. way to put it is that, um, progressive overload is what builds muscle. All of these can be used, uh, to, to increase. Overload. Yeah. To, to progressively overload someone. So, how does load increase progressive overload? That's an easy one, right? You add weight. Mm -hmm. How about reps? Well, you add reps. What about tempo? Well, take an exercise that you could do 10 reps with. Slow it down. And slow it down. Now you can only do seven reps, right? Um, and, and so now you've progressively overload the body. So this, all of these are, are equally important. And some of them are more important than others, depending on who I'm talking to. Yeah. If I watch someone work out, I could tell which one is going to give them more bang for their buck. Right, right. Um, and it's, and it can be different from person to person. Well, let's so. give examples. Okay. So I, let's say I take on a client. Um, I've got, let's say a female competitor. She's actually really experienced. She's got great form and technique, but I notice right away that she, you know, she tends to slow the tempo down and manipulate rep ranges more than anything else. And she's a bit afraid to load the bar. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to stretch her there. I'm going to challenge her in that area because I know that that's an area that she probably hasn't pushed. And I know she's got more gas in the gas tank than that. And, I, and we're going to get more bang for our buck. So that's an example. Take another client who's brand new, can't even do a bicep curl without rocking their elbows and shoulders. Like I'm not going to load the bar on that client anymore because they can't, their technique is so off. I'm going to focus on the tempo and slow it down so I can show them how to keep their shoulders in the fixed position and keep their elbows pinned by their side. And like, and I'm going to teach mechanics. Meanwhile, knowing that I am also progressively overloading because I'm slowing the tempo down. So yeah. it, it, I mean, it's going to be different for every client that you take, yeah, take on. Yeah. Take somebody who's been powerlifting for years and actually competes at a, at a very high level reps. Have them train with some higher reps. That's yeah, what happened. Right. Yeah. Never seen 15, 20 rep range before. We had Brand Stan Efferding. Stimulus like Stan Efferding yeah. was on the show. He was uh, very experienced uh, as a power lifter and wanted to get a pro card, um, hired Flex Wheeler. And mm -hmm. Flex Wheeler had him do 20 reps uh, sets for lower body, which he'd never done before in his legs. Yeah. Totally grew. So they're all completely changed based on the avatar that's in front of yeah, us. This yeah. is like saying what's more important when you're making a cake, eggs, milk, or flour. Or like, it's more like what's know? the best exercise for X? Yeah, they because all move you, the needle. It, that it, that all changes based off of what that person has currently been doing what that goal right. is and so it's a bit nuanced to say what's more important so what's most important is that all of these are tools in your tool belt and if you're not using one of them you're missing out on potential gains next question is from aurora madison i can often grind out a few extra reps if i take a pause for two to five seconds between the last few reps of a set to catch my breath does that mean I am cheating and should just end the set when I start slowing down too much? No, you know what this is like. It's like rest pause a little bit. Yeah, or yeah, rest. What well, you could call rest pause cluster sets. It's mm -hmm. a technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that a uh, great strategy uh, to utilize this. But if that's how you train all the time, too yeah. much every time, you always work out and you never mix it up, or you don't give yourself any rest and you go right into the next rep. Uh, then uh, you're missing out on gains. Yeah. So it uh, doesn't mean you're cheating. Well, it's a, it, that's a, a, a valid way to uh, get new gains potentially if you've n listening to this and you've never done that. Well, yeah. And, and if you're seeking an adaptation more of like muscle endurance and you're doing more supersetting, obviously, you know, that's not the focus. So uh, at that point, you kind of go till you you feel like you have to stop. And, and so if you have to pause and then do more reps, it does sort of defeat the purpose in that setting. Yeah. I actually hate the term uh, cheating in an exercise sense. Uh, and it comes from, I guess, competition. Like if you're a power lifter, there's a certain technique 
And if you're outside that technique, then they won't give you the green light and they'll say it doesn't qualify. So like if you're bench pressing and your butt comes off the bench, well, that's cheating. It's a bad lift. Really, it's just uh, better technique, better applications of, uh, you know, methods and worse. Mm -hmm. So is it or different or different sticking yeah. with your intention going into yeah, it? Yeah, but there's better or worse. Yeah, like yeah. you could do like kipping pull ups, and that's a style oh, of pull up. Yeah. Uh, but is it as effective as a strict pull up? Generally speaking, no. It's better for people who want to learn how to do kipping pull ups, but right, not right. for most people. Um, this is just a, like you guys said. It's a, it's a technique. I think it's a great way to increase intensity. I don't think you should do this all the time. For most people, this will be too much intensity if applied on a regular basis. In my opinion, if you're advanced and everything else is going good, I think this would be great to add maybe every other week mm -hmm. um, to squeeze out the intensity. But doing it on a regular basis, and you'll probably hit a wall pretty quick. Next question is from Guy Pettigrew. What is the value in picking exercises that train muscles in the shortened and lengthened positions? Ooh, yeah. Brain, strength curve. Yeah, well, yeah. so the value is this. Okay, there's a pretty – the body adapts pretty specifically when it comes to strength, meaning – if I get good at an exercise uh, that loads my bicep with the most weight in a shortened position, um, then the type of strength I'm going to gain is going to be most applicable in, in a similar way. So a lot of the strength gains are going to come in that shortened position. If I load it, if I do an exercise where the load is heaviest in the stretch position, same thing. So the reason why bodybuilders train with lots of angles and different extra, like you think to yourself, like, why do five exercises for your biceps, why not just do the same exercise uh, as many sets? So instead of doing 15 sets with five different exercises, why don't you just do 15 sets of one exercise? It's all the biceps. What's the difference? Well, the difference is this, is the adaptation is quite specific. Some exercises load in the shortened, some exercises load in the lengthened. Elbow position matters, hand position matters um, because of the specificity of the adaptation. So this is true for any exercise. So they're both valuable. You should probably do both. Yeah, I like to just pay attention, especially like I like talking about this with uh, bicep and tricep, right? Your arms is in a workout. I try and make sure I include both, right? Something in the short and something in the, in the length in, in, a, in a workout like that. At the very least, you should be aware if you're always training in one or the other, mm -hmm. because the, to your point about it's a specific adaptation, like there's massive value there if you're always training in the shortened position, or you're always training in the length of position to make sure you include the other. And I think people actually uh, unintentionally do this and then they think that there was something magical about a specific exercise. Yeah. For example, like mm. if you always do like all these cable push downs and like skull crushers and so that, and then all of a sudden someone's like, oh, you never do dumbbell overhead extensions? And then you do them and you're like, your triceps blow up and you're like, you think all of a sudden there's something magical about the overhead triceps extension. Well, Maybe it was less about the the overhead tricep extension being magical, and it's that you never train your triceps in the completely lengthened position mm -hmm. like that. And there's tremendous value doing that, and it's a, a total different stimulus right. compared to all those other tricep exercises that you were doing. Yeah, yeah. and you're just able to build, you know, fuller. Uh, you have more opportunity to to build muscle uh, in that lengthened position, uh, and also too from a functional perspective like if we train too much in a short and, and that's our entire goal is to hit that peak of the muscle you know what is that going to do in terms of my overall movement potential and, and what i'm you know what i'm able to do in terms of like functionality so like i'm strongest just in this one small uh, portion of of range of motion versus like now i get in an extended position and uh you, you know i'm not able to stabilize properly i like i'm opening myself to be vulnerable to a tear or, you know, like your body's going to respond uh, negatively. Yeah. So here's a good example of uh, what we're talking about. Let's say you took two twins. So same exact uh, identical genetics. So identical twins. And they also lived an identical lifestyle, ate the same, slept the same, same stress. Everything was identical. One person only did leg press. The other person only did barbell squats. Well, the person who only did leg press is going to be stronger than their brother at the leg press, but the person who did squats all the time is going to be stronger at the squats than the brother who did leg press because of the specificity of these types of adaptations. So the theory was, which has been proven, that if you do multiple exercises, you're going to derive better benefits than if you just do one uh, exercise or only strength, you know, strengthen something in a shortened or lengthened position. Um, so that's the value. So there's value in, in, in both positions. There's value in mid-range positions too. Mm -hmm. Some exercises don't load the muscle heavily 
in the stretch or the shortened positions, really in the mid-range position. Um, and those are also valuable. So you want to train with multiple angles. Next question is from Ricky Bobby zero one. What are the best lower body exercises for older people with osteopenia in the legs? So osteopenia is before osteoporosis. This is when you start to see bone loss uh, or bone weakness before it becomes it starts to get really really bad. Okay, and uh, to be clear, any kind of strength training for the lower body will build the bone uh, just like it builds muscle. Anything that builds muscle builds bone. Muscle anchors to bone. If the muscle is uh, under more stress, then the bone is under more stress and the bone strengthens. And nothing has been shown. Nothing has come close to strength training for strengthening bone. Okay, so, so to be clear, any exercise will be great. Now, I'm going to speak more generally. In my experience working with older pe people with lower body weakness and osteopenia, uh, one of my favorite exercises, mainly because most of them could kind of do it, and so we could right away get into, you know, strengthening was pushing a sled. Mm. Pushing a sled was so appropriate for, first of all, it's an exercise I could do with advanced people. And so when I would have a complete, like an older person, as long as they could walk, right? So not someone who had a walker or whatever, but someone who could walk, I would have a sled. I wouldn't load it at all. So it'd be a little bit of resistance and they would just push it across uh, the grass and it would provide enough resistance for them. That would be, and it was just, it, it didn't require a ton of skill. I didn't have to like take them through this this technique curve of learning the technique and stuff like that. And then we would see strengthening happening, you know, right away. So that's one of my favorite. I, I love that that's answer, um, and not what I was thinking because I was trying to take myself back to those types of clients that I train and what do we try and do. And it does really matter at what level they are. I mean, the whatever I start them on, the goal is can I get them to do a barbell back squat at one point? Can I get this yeah. client strong enough to eventually load a barbell? And, and you never you might never get there. And we might never get there. Yeah. Exactly right. So and where where did I have to regress and and start them? Um I love like, you know, split stance, unilateral, like a like a like a stationary lunge is what I recall doing a lot where I'd have like a I'd put a pad for their knee to come down to. I'd a lot of times I'd have to assist them where they were like holding holding my hands or they had yeah. something by their TRX side. Or something, yeah, or TRX yeah, prop. strap, something to kind of help help them stabilize. And that is how we started. And then the goal was to get rid of of them holding on to anything, and then could they yeah. actually stabilize themselves, and then eventually do something like a very small step up, you know, and then I could gradually increase the step up over time and stuff. Although in this pursuit of can I get this person enough stability and strength to be able to do a bar that that's the like, and that would be like, by the way, like that's like a huge celebration. Forget body fat, this whatever, like that's like. Man, and I, and I would, in my presentation, that's what I would be telling her. If she sat down with me and she goes, this is what I have going on. This is what mm -hmm. the doctor told me. He says, I need to strengthen my lower body. I'd say, great. These are the type of movements that we're going to start with for these reasons. But our goal is, and what will be a huge win, if we can get to a point where I can load, load you and we can do a barbell back squat, that is going to be an amazing day when we get there. And then that would be the goal is like, let's start progressing that direction. hundred percent. I mean, again. But I love the sled is like yeah, the that's most- a great answer. It's, it's super like easy. The, like literally almost anybody could get start with that. The super light sled. You just yeah. push it across small steps. Doesn't have to be a big Very steps. low risk, you know, because yes. you just let go and it's like no, no more demand if you feel anything kind of like uh, affecting the joints at all. And so it's, it, that's a fantastic exercise that most people should be doing. Totally. Now, I love if you do that because that's so concentric focused, I would like couple that. So let's just pretend because obviously you go that direction because this person is incredibly like- Yeah, they're older with osteopenia. Yeah, they can't yeah. do hardly anything. So they can't do the other ones I talked about. That person, I could see myself pushing the sled and then actually doing like an eccentric sit down squat yep, yep. where I would stand in front of her. She would hold my hands and I'd want her to lower herself as slow as she could down to the chair yep, and then, and then get back up. up. Yep. So lower down to the chair exactly as what slow as you can. So now yeah. I'm getting the benefits of the eccentric portion of, of strengthening her lower body. And then I'm also getting the, the positive of, from the concentric on the, yeah. on the but I will say yeah. this, when you just get started, just do one. It's really yeah. easy to right. overdo it. Right, right, right. No, yeah. no. Yeah. They can push the slide. That, that, great point. Like, that would be a different session. Totally. Right? So if she's never trained anything, totally. sled, sled pushing mm -hmm. for a session is like enough That's work enough. and it's going to elicit mm -hmm. something. And then the next time we and might- Dragging focus. the sled too, right. obviously. That's right, right. That's another one. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. 
Justin is on Instagram at MindPumpJustin. I'm on Instagram at MindPumpDeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.